Hello, everybody. Hello, you are in for a treat. Welcome. I hope that you are doing amazing. Happy Monday. And thank you to all of the veterans who served this Memorial Day. Today, I have a very special guest. We start at, was it, 630? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, like, share. So over here, we have Aaron Winters, Aaron On Demand. And when I tell you that this entrepreneur, she's amazing. She is absolutely amazing. So tonight we will be on with her. She's going to tell us how does she balance, you know, being a wife, you know, being a content creator and just helping so many people. Her YouTube channel, when we talk about lifestyle, she got it going on. So we are definitely going to highlight her. And let's see, we, and I can also show you something else. Yeah, I'm going to choose a different, what they say, an asset, which is cool. So this is her page, if you're just wondering. So she is a marketing guru, and I am in her eBrand program, which allows content creators, entrepreneurs to really navigate and find out the best way um, for them to, you know, work their business. So I'm very excited to be on with Erin, and she is here with us now. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I am doing good. Oh my goodness. I get to talk to my coach, y'all. <laughs> when I tell you Aaron is the bomb, I was just doing my intro on you. But first of all, let me tell people who you are. This is Aaron Winters, okay? She's an Emma Bowen fellow, but also, y'all, she helps entrepreneurs and content creators all over the world i happen to be in her e-brand program which is a monthly program and we receive coaching so we receive group coaching and i'm excited to share you all my coach i know a lot of people are like i don't want you to know who i learned from oh uh, like, <laughs> selfish you know i love that no i'm so glad Wait, okay one two say it again were you an emma bowen too i was so oh. I was Emma Bowen fellow, um, I think from like 2016 up to about 2018. Okay, cool. No, but thank you very much. Um, so this month in May, we are highlighting women who are beasts when it comes to content creation. So I know you, you have your YouTube channel, but I really like how you talk about lifestyle, um, not only are you an entrepreneur, let's put it out there. You're a, you're a black woman, okay, who is doing it. And you're also a wife. But I really want to just talk about, you know, the lifestyle. How are you able to balance? I saw one of your emails that you uh, put out. And I believe it was last week. And you were talking about, you know, uh, a lifestyle and balance. But you were really, I think you said inclusion. So just talk to us. How are you able to navigate the two with so much going on? Mm, I think it's more of prioritizing than like necessarily balancing and my whole like top three philosophy is to prioritize and like prioritize your top three most important things and I think that when you stop trying to give everything equal attention all the time is when you can actually devote all of your attention to one thing at a time so uh, that's what I try my best to do so when I'm doing something i'm i'm hopefully giving as much of myself to that one thing at a time and then i can move on to the next so when it comes to like spending time with my family or yeah. spending time with my husband or cooking dinner or work like i try to just be as locked in to that one thing as possible okay and let me ask you you know how long did it take you to develop that philosophy for a lot of people it's taken like people are in their 50s and 60s to just learn it how did you get it so early um, I don't know. I mean, I think I, it, I've i had like this innate ability to just kind of understand like how to maximize my time and my energy. And I'm like a natural procrastinator. And I think everyone kind of has those tendencies. So when you hear things like this, you're like, well, it's hard for me to focus or it's hard for me to like do one thing at a time but I think for that you just have to practice doing small things at a time like one at a time so maybe if you have five minutes of focused 
uninterrupted time and then you up that to 10 minutes and then like yeah. i feel like try to sit down and do such a huge task at one time that's when you get overwhelmed and that's when you start getting distracted when you when you feel like you're not moving the needle forward so it's like okay if you're folding laundry like try to just lock in with folding laundry and then kind mm -hmm. of report yourself in a small way after you're done like then go get a drink of water then go you know switch the music playlist or then go you know so i think it's more of just like practicing a muscle it's not necessarily like you know a personality trait or anything like that i don't think i think it's more of just like getting yourself into practicing it more do you consider yourself type a no i'm actually no i'm not at all and it's so interesting because i think that how people perceive me is type a but i'm not type a my husband is type a and i'm more of like the creative all over the place person which is what like top three was rooted in and which is why i have to be very like okay Aaron, one thing at a time i can't have too many windows open on my computer like i have to really be like zoned in so i'm definitely not type a which is why i kind of have adopted like a one thing at a time mind or like i try to just you know i can have stuff like my desk drawers are like i try to be organized and like i'll have like all the little drawer separators and stuff and then it's like mail and papers like on top of the separators mm -hmm. and like it's just it'd be all over the place so <laughs> <laughs> can't function like, that. like even with that i know where everything is but my husband it, that kind of stuff drives him nuts so it's kind of i mean i think i probably have a bit of both in me i don't know i never like super classify myself into one thing so let me tell you from the outside world's perspective if i'm looking from a consumer and if i am looking from being i would say like i'm a part of your online coaching program I see you as somebody who is like, boom, boom, boom. And I'll be like, okay, well, I need to boom, boom, boom. I need to get inside my portal. Like, if I don't get in my portal, it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, she might be type A. Do I need to be type A? That's what I'm like. <laughs> no, I think more of just like figuring out what, like, if you can identify where your, um, I don't know, I, I guess like where your, I don't want to call them flaws, but just kind of small little roadblocks in like in your personality or in your habits. Like, I think it's more important to just address those than to like classify yourself as a type, you know? Mm. So if you know you're easily distracted or if you know you struggle with like, um, I don't know, whatever people struggle with. Like if you know you have different little quirks, like addressing those one at a time instead of trying to just change your entire ways, you know, to try to be more of what you think you should be. So, and that's kind of like what I did. That's how like top three came about was because I was like, I get so distracted so easily. I get overwhelmed very easily with having too many tasks to do. Aaron, focus yes. on, you know, that's enough. If you can get three things done in a day, you're good. So it, it, it comes from like, understanding yourself more you know and like being okay with that and then figuring out how, what you can do about it so i see everybody in the comments today we are just talking to aaron winters aka aaron on demand about her being a successful woman in content creation and entrepreneurship so make sure if you have a question put it below i have one pinned here and we'll get to it later i want to ask you a couple more before you um because i know it is memorial day i can see you working but i want to say thank you for your time <laughs> Talk to me about this. I know um, you were, I believe, in the top 10 to be one of the hosts for Live with Kelly and Ryan, correct? Oh, that, yeah. And I say that because there are a lot of people who can get on camera and have no on-air or broadcast experience, which is fine, and they can still be successful in it. But you actually have a track record, and me just looking at your LinkedIn of doing things um, – um, for TV and like you were saying, like one of your first jobs was working in TV for about a year and then staying at home. How, what would you say to a lot of the entrepreneurs and content creators out there who probably need to get their communication skills together? What is the best practices you would give to them? Cause you have formal training. Um, I would, yeah, I think it's like a lot of people see the tip of the iceberg. I feel like we've all heard that analogy, but like you see the tip of the iceberg, but you don't see all of the years and years of work of me being on camera, 
very uncomfortable on camera at that. Um, but I would say the biggest thing is like trying to, I, I feel like people just try to like skip a whole staircase at one time. It's like you would never just jump up like 20 steps at one time. You have to take one sure. step at a time. So, um, I always just recommend practice, practice, practice. There is honestly no shortcuts to becoming better in a skill than practicing. <laughs> um, and it's really just, there's no fancy answer. It's no fancy strategy. I mean, I would <laughs> practicing in the mirror I would be practicing on camera like I would sit my camera up and I would just talk to it and try to speak in whole sentences and try to cut out how many pet words I use try to really like work on my speaking skills and then I went to school for broadcast journalism so I was really pushed in that way um if you're if you don't want to just practice on your own though I did Toastmasters as well which is like mm. a uh, program it helps you become a better speaker and it's a certificate you get once you complete the program and it's it's like a world known program for speakers so it's something you can add to your LinkedIn profile and it's just a really helpful program so if you need like a takeaway thing that you can go off and do to help you practice better in a more controlled environment where there are people who are like you who are also scared to speak or don't speak well in front of people then I would highly recommend Toastmasters. But the biggest thing is just practicing, 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 practicing. I mean, you will see there are channels, YouTube channels of people who have spent five years on camera and then the sixth year their channel pops off because they practice. And those were all their practice years. Yeah. And it's like you upload for three months and you're like, oh my gosh, like I don't have to views. <laughs> That's, so, be, my head. That's so it, me. Yeah, and it can be very, but it, I think about what if I started my channel when I was in college, when I had no experience on camera, you know? Like, I think about those days, and I'm like, my channel may have taken seven years to take off for once I, when it did now. You know, I just so happened to start it at a time where I was kind of growing and really developing in that area, and I think that that had a lot to do with it. So I would say be patient as well, like practice, okay. practice practice and it just take it i'm still growing i still look at videos from last year and be like oh goodness like what was i said like why did i say that like that so you you also have to know that you're never gonna be you have to put out the best possible product or video or whatever that you can for where you are and you, there's always gonna be room to grow and it's never just gonna be perfect so well let's yeah. talk about that because you, we are in an age and aaron you know this that if something doesn't go viral in 10 minutes, we've done wrong. Like if I use the audio trends for Instagram and I don't get 16.4, I'm like, oh my, oh my gosh, like what I, I did what I was supposed to do. Talk to us about that. Just briefly, the process, because uh, you said that and a lot of people, they don't get that. The virality of now, can, like how much virality, like, almost validates your ability yes. to be a good creator is just a very toxic mindset to have and obviously the like when you do when those things do happen it's very good it's, it's cool I should say but it's also like I have so many people in the e-brand club so many people in my course created a CEO course who are not going viral, who have smaller audiences, who are making a heck of a lot of money, you know? And it's like, that's to me, like changing your lifestyle, being able to like inspire people and like touch people, that to me is way more important than going viral. And I feel like we hear these things all the time, but if you don't have anything to do with the viral audience that you're bringing in, it, there's literally no point in going viral. You know what I mean? It's like, if you can't push that audience to a product or a service or something where you can actually monetize and if you can't keep them engaged with your content after they found you, like, think about the people who go viral, like Tabitha Brown, for example, who goes viral, and now she's still relevant years later. You yeah. know, like, you have to be able to capture people. And that's not just going viral over and over again. That's like having heart and soul and being able to tell a story and being able to develop as a person. And, like, you see Tabitha Brown, and, and you're attached to her success mm -hmm. and her 
spirit and her all these different elements of like who she is not like there are other people who are viral sensations and who will have hu who have huge audiences but they don't capture the hearts of people like others do so i think it's you have to kind of look at going viral like you know you have to look at it carefully because for different people it just means different things and to me the best way like if you go viral the best thing that you can do is to be able to maintain those those people and when that doesn't happen that's when people start to have this crash and freak out and are like why can't it, why isn't it happening again and you start creating content that you think is what people want to see instead of the content that you just love you know mm. so it's it's it i can talk about this all day but i know so vi yeah. being viral doesn't mean success it doesn't I think it just depends. Like, if you are somebody who is ready to be, like, if, if virality is some, like Tabitha Brown, for Tabitha Brown, going viral did that's for her because she took it and she made the most out of it. And she didn't let it compromise who she was. You know that's what I'm saying? That's true. So, like, if you go viral and then you, and then, like, now you're trying to check, like, go, go, keep going viral. You, like, sucked all of the heart out of why you even went viral. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, like, that tends to happen to a lot of people. And then they, they, they freak out because they're like, well, my engagement went down. And, not, like, now I can't, I can't reach people like how this one video did. Right. So, I think it just, it, it, I can't say going viral doesn't mean success or it does because for in some circumstances like we've seen it happen like some people go viral and then now they're superstars or now they're yeah. extremely wealthy or very impactful on our society so you know it just it it has to be rooted in something i think that's more of what i'm trying to say and you, you have get. to for it you got to catch you got to catch it when it's red like you got to be ready for it you know you have to be able to know what you're like what to kind of do with that um type of success if that's what you can do. what you're telling me is when you hot you hot you better catch it <laughs> <laughs> i Let think see. that's kind of strategy and i think that that's that's a good like that's good and but i think that so many people get too caught up in strategy that you don't just roll with it you know what i'm saying like you don't just post what you feel like what like people don't know you they don't feel you you know and so sometimes strategy can kind of suck the feel out of your content and and I talk to so many successful business people and they they're so like business minded that they can't fathom like posting like just you walking into work and like saying a little blah 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 or like making fun of the person who I don't know like they can't imagine creating content that isn't strategized that isn't like tips or sitting at the camera talking mm -hmm. as a talking head and like they've mapped it out in their content plan and like it's something that people nowadays are so conditioned to like you have to plan every single thing out and it's the people who are just doing it who are just like Evan I'm just I'm about to just show who I am and why I love this those are the people who end up making it, who don't even care about all the like nooks and crannies of, you know, I don't know. You guys, no, I get what you say. I mean, you see, I, I I learned about your brand through somebody at Emma Bowen. They said you need to start following her. Once I started, you talked about personality, even your group, your our intimate, you know, Facebook group. That's just about okay. What what are you saying? Not what did the strategy say. But what are you saying now in this? A lot of that is missing because a lot of people, they see 100K and they're like, okay, I did exactly what this person said. How come I didn't get it? So something must be wrong. And I think that that's really important where you said, okay, number one, run your race. And in and, and just layman's terms, run your race. And then when you do receive it, you have to be ready. So that's for business just, you know, down the line. I'm going to ask one more question and then I'm going to go to Q&A. So if you have a question for Aaron on demand, this is now your time to put it in there. How important does your faith um, contribute to what you do and who you are? It's so important. It's like the foundation. And I wouldn't be able to do any of this without having faith. And it's just so crazy. God just be providing. He just do. And he, right. just, he just makes it work. And there have been times, like, when I first started Aaron on Demand, I didn't have a job. I would live in, I lived with my parents. I was 
you know, just trying to figure it out. And I was doing it as a video production company. And I grew to realize that I really hated doing video from the standpoint. Like, <laughs> I much yeah. rather camera and so when I had that realization I kind of freaked out because that was what I was making my money from like I wasn't making money from YouTube yet so and um, my mom was just like Erin you need to just stop then like stop doing the video production and I I had to really pray and like really ask God for guidance like what am I gonna do like how am I going to make money I knew that I knew that I was on to something and yeah. like he was showing me like evidence that this is something, you know, I just didn't know how it was going to all shape out. And I think being content and like being secure in my faith is what allowed everything to just kind of take shape. And it was kind of like, I was just running the race. It was like every, like, it was crazy. I'm, I, I can't make this up. Like every few steps when I, when I would start to get cloudy, like, Lord, where, what is this? You know, it was <laughs> I would say I always say like I had these little golden bricks like scattered throughout my journey and I still feel like yeah. well, that's a golden brick like this person walked into my life at the perfect time in the perfect place to tell me this perfect thing like I needed this in that moment I know that's nothing but God so it's just stuff like that like even being a faith-based person like a Christian right. a spiritual woman like you still have to be able to see that though like you still have to be able to like see when God is telling you like this is the sign that I'm trying to give you. this is what I'm trying to tell you it's still our choice and our 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 ability to to discern to be able to like actually catch what he he telling us you know what I'm saying so yeah it's it's a huge part in my life and and in the no. no, I'm going to tell you this. As a woman who is a Christian, uh, who's a believer in Christ, and I see that you are the same, you know, you have, the thing is you apply faith and you apply works. You say, mm -hmm. okay, these are the principles. I'm using what God has given me. And you're saying, I'm going to take this marketplace in business. There are a lot of people, and as, and as you know, church-based people, they say a lot, but they don't do a lot. But when I see, when a lot of people and believers see you, they say, okay, you do have to put in the work. Um, you, and it's, yeah. it goes, it's like faith without works is dead, but also work without faith is dead. Like you can be doing the work and you can like be okay. trying your best. And, and if you don't have faith that you're actually going to like move forward in that and like that it's going to work out because I see so many people who like have, the work ethic but they don't mm -hmm. have that they're actually that work ethic is actually going to get them to the next place so that's why you see so many mindset coaches and so yes. many like coaches who are trying to help you shift your mindset because it's like you can know how to do the work you can be in my e-brand club you can be in creator to ceo you can be in whatever but if you don't have faith in yourself in in God and whatever you believe, like it's not going to happen. So I always say like that, that scripture, it goes both ways. So, yeah. No, I, I definitely agree. We've been, we're about to do Q and A. And again, we have like eight more minutes to talk with Erin. She is my online coach. Everybody <laughs> don't share their online coaches, um, but yeah. I'm sharing y'all to her. Uh, the Put it in the club. Huh? Hopefully you put the graphic in the club. So I did. I put it in the Facebook group and I said, y'all okay. join. Yeah. Um, my question uh, somebody says simple secrets. Uh, my question is how do you translate views and the followers? If you're consistently getting views on content, how do you get people to follow? Mm, keep being consistently good. I think it's, it's <laughs> about like creating content that actually sticks. Like that kind of goes back to what we were saying there. You can, make good content but if this if it's not sticky content if it's not content that people see something in them of or like if it's one piece of good content and then they go to your page and then they see like a whole bunch of other random things like you have to that's why the consistency makes it it is so important because like for me I had multiple videos on my channel before I had one piece of content that actually stuck with more people where it brought in more subscribers so like once that happened, then people started binging my other content. So yeah, 
kind of like if you're not making sticky content and by that I mean just like compelling it's storytelling involved like it's personality it's interesting it's 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 entertaining and educating like if you don't have certain elements of good content then it's gonna be hard to get people to stick and stay so no that's really good um that spelling um let me see it's consistently truly a game changer yeah we just um said that it, you do need to be consistent but i want it, you to go ahead this, but it's consistently good so like you can <laughs> like just like okay you can consistently eat a bag of chips every day or you can consistently eat a salad every day either way you're consistently doing something where it's consistently good or consistently bad so like you have to figure it like you're dictating the results and i think the consistency is a muscle that you do have to build so like if you're doing if you're i i'll tell people put out bad content consistently then we can refine the content you've got the consistency down pack that's the hardest part that most people struggle with is they're they struggle with being consistent because they're trying to make it too perfect so uh oh keep yeah and i also want to ask pete you uh oh somebody's trying to come on live i don't know who that is but they're not coming on um let me ask you this so what do you say to people who they have started off with an audience that was really good. And then for some reason, it you often hear people say it, it took like a downturn. You start off with a whole bunch of engagement, then it went down. How do you bounce back from that? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Sometimes when my phone rings during lives, the audio goes out, which is so strange. Um, um, I think it's just that happens i think that that's a good time if you do have a content strategy which i'm not saying i feel like in one of my things like one of my responses i may have made people feel like they don't need a strategy which yeah. i think strategy loosely you know like you can have a strategy but it's okay to deviate it's okay to hold on, i'm on live here. um it's okay to, <laughs> it's okay to like you know be yourself and go off of the strategy but i think that if you've been doing the same content for a long time um it may be time to take a look at that and try try out some different things experiment like try vlogging if you've never done that try creating i don't know reels or creating swipe posts or getting back to like the roots of the content that was grabbing people may maybe you've strayed away from what you were doing and people want more of what you were doing so you know i think it's just a good time to kind of audit your content it may be a good time to get someone else's eyes on your content so that they can see if there are areas that you can improve so there's a lot of different things that you can do if you start seeing your content plateauing um but i think the biggest thing is looking at yourself and like am i even enjoying this anymore like has it become routine for me has yes. and that's me you know like i i felt probably like it's just been in the last couple of weeks that I've kind of felt like I'm coming out of a content lull or like funk. Um, and you kind of have to get to that. Like, I mean, get to thinking about where am I with my creation? So um, if you feel like that, sometimes you just need to take a break, honestly, and just look at the big picture and really think about why you're doing it and what can kind of help you get back to enjoying it more. So. That's a, that's key. That's why I really like, cause, um, Erin, within her club, and you, she sends out emails, and it's basically to help, you know, us to get prepared for the week, but it's also, she talked about, it's, you said, what is it, life, bad, what, what are the three words that you use? Oh, girl, I don't even know what email you're talking about. I, ah! I, <laughs> it was something like, instead of inclusion, I'm, life I'm, and balance, I was like, that's good. Cool. Team to send. Sometimes they add their little sauce to it. So, girl, I don't even know what email you're talking about. But, oh. you know, I'm glad that it resonated with you. And I think that that's the biggest thing is making cons. Like, I'm glad that even as an e boss, you feel as though there are things that you're getting from that space that you can't get from my content. You can't get from my YouTube channel or, right. you know comment on a post I may not see it but you know in the club like I really try to give more of myself in that space so if any of you guys are interested if you enjoyed this conversation you know if you're interested in joining the club it's it's 
on my website, ErinOnDemand.com. Enrollment is still open. So um, it's a great program. We have so much fun. And I do lives every week. Yes, she does. Whether we have a masterclass speaker coming in, a guest speaker who's an mm -hmm. expert in some other field that I'm not in, um, or we do Q&As all the time. We do audits. We're going to have a product audit next month. So if you're a product-based business, I'll get to, you can send me your product and I'll audit the packaging and the branding and all of the, all of the things. So um, yeah, I'm super excited. And I'm so thankful that you're in the club and that we were able to do this. No, Aaron, I want to say thank you. And before we get out of here, um, what I know you said that the eBoss program is still open and that's the program that I'm a part of. Excellent. When I say A plus plus plus, you you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. Tell us what else can other people look forward to that you have? Um, I have my course, the creator to CEO course. It's more of the business side. So the eBrand Club, we're kind of starting to skew it more in the content and marketing side, and the um course is more of the business stuff. So it's kind of, uh, I would say if you are a content creator and you want to turn content creation into your full-time business, then creator to CEO is the course for you. Um, I just, I've always been like very scatterbrained and like, like I was saying, like I made it for the scatterbrained content creator who wants to go full-time with me. And it is an incredible program. Like I we have so much fun. We it's more of a mastermind group kind of because mm -hmm. smaller amount of people. So I give way more. If you think I give a good amount of attention in the eBrand club, I give way yeah. more attention for us because for one, it is a $2,000 investment. So it's a bit more, um, but it is just a group of incredible people who are ready to like go to the next level. So um, the eBrand club is great as well. It's more about social media content, like, that and then the creator to CEO course is more for business and taking your content creation into turning it into a business, whether service, product, whatever. So, yeah, three those things are that I want you to do for Aaron off the rip. Number one, if you haven't, go get her top three priorities notebook. Everything is listed inside okay. her link in bio. And then number two, either become a part of her eBrand club or become her a part of her creator CEO course. I wanted to say, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You were able to answer a lot of questions and spend your Memorial Day with your followers. So we really want to say thank you. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I forgot Memorial Day, girl. If you were not a boss, I best believe I would. I know! But since you were a boss, then let me go on, on upstairs. I remember my <laughs> so Let me go on, on upstairs and, and uh, get on this live, honey. So... Yes, someone said that I didn't know about the course. Yes, I have that course. And I haven't been, like, promoting it a whole, whole lot. Um, Once I launched it, I got so burnt out. <laughs> so I had to just kind of take a break. But we are about to be up and pumping with um, pushing the course and just kind of going through a little bit of a revamp of Erin On Demand, just taking a bird's eye view of all of our services. So if you mm -hmm. are Considering it, I'm just going to say this. If you are considering either joining the club or buying the course, I will highly recommend doing it as soon as possible before we start changing some things up. Um, uh -oh. That's going to mean changing pricing. I don't know if that's going to mean changing. I don't know what it's going to mean. We haven't started, but um, it's probably going to be coming soon. Uh, Somebody when said, when does it start? Um, the course is open for purchase. And so is the eBrand Club. They're both open. We'll probably close the eBrand for enrollment within the next two to three weeks. Um, so I would recommend going ahead and, and trying to grab a spot in there. But it's not, it's not, it's open for enrollment, I should say. Um, someone said, oh, I'm already in the club three years. Woo! Yes! Um, and as for the course, the course is also open for enrollment as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and once you get in, like it is an on demand course, so you can, huh, it's on demand, but it, it's not, it's self paced, so you get all of the, you get the entire course at one time. Um, oh, I, okay, yeah, so it's not like I'm dripping the content, so you can get in and do the course at your own pace. And we send these really cool boxes for everyone who joins the course, so it's been really fun. I, I've been enjoying getting to know them in the course. So, last question this person, Shiz Rai, says, Where can they purchase? And I put you can purchase it on her website, link in bio. 
Yes, erinondemand.com is where you can find everything. Yes, there is a private group in the course. And that's why I was saying, like, it's more of a mastermind feel because it's smaller. I don't know if it will always feel like that, which is why I also encourage people to, like, if you are interested in getting the course, get it soon because because it's so small, like, it's, like, maybe a, eh, I would say it's about, it's less than 100 people in the course, in the course group. So, I would say because of that, I have way more time and attention for, for the people who are in there. So it's a really cool. Thank you, Aaron. And I'm going to see you in class next Monday. Tomorrow. It, because Tomorrow. of, no, Wednesday. Because of Memorial Day, we've bumped it to Wednesday. So Okay. Sounds good. You see how we in class and this is the professor. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank Bye. you again. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. If you're just now with me, I'm going to tell you, make sure you go back and look at the replay. And do you guys also meet weekly? Yes, we do meet for her course weekly. I actually have an Instagram reel. I get paid for my Facebook reels, and I also get paid for my Instagram reels. You can purchase that, the link in bio. So again, if you want to learn how to get paid for your Instagram reels and also your Facebook reels, go to the link in bio, my link in bio. You will absolutely love it. Um, the course is going to be in June, so make sure that you sign up. Hello to all the new people who are joining. We just interviewed Aaron On Demand. Make sure you go back and watch it. This will also be on my YouTube channel. You do not want to miss this. Let me see. There are a couple more questions. Yeah, for her course, we do meet weekly. For our eBrand course, we do, we, meet, we do meet weekly, and that's an online course. Again, Last one, if you want to um, learn how to make money from your Facebook or your Instagram reels, make sure that you go to my link in bio and purchase that registration real close so you can know how to get paid for real. All right, good people. I will see you guys later. And thank you very much for joining us. Bye-bye.